All right, everybody, buckle up. We're diving into a real head scratcher today. That's right. We're talking about the 1979 Michigan UFO where? Ah, oh, the 70s. Disco was king, bell bottoms were all the rage. And the skies above Michigan were putting on a show of their own? Hundreds of reports spanning months, all these people claiming to see something strange up there. And it wasn't just your average Joe off the street. We're talking police officers, pilots, people you'd think would know a thing or two about what's flying around. Exactly. So what was it about Michigan in 79 that got everyone looking up? Well, let's start with the sightings themselves. People were describing these large, bright lights in the sky. Like brighter than a shooting star, brighter than a plane. What are we talking? Brighter and way more erratic. These things were zipping around, making turns no airplane could manage. Some reports even mention formations, multiple objects moving in sync. Sounds like something straight out of Close Encounters. Mm -hmm. I bet people were freaking out a little. You better believe it. Imagine you're driving home late at night, maybe listening to some Donna Summer on the radio. Classic. And then, boom, this massive silent light cuts across the sky. Wouldn't you pull over for a closer look? You know I would. Curiosity always gets the best of me. But this wasn't just a one-night wonder, right? These sightings went on for a while. Oh, yeah, for months. This thing was the talk of the town, especially around the Great Lakes. Specifically near Detroit and Grand Rapids. Right in the thick of it. Now, why those locations? That's a question we're still trying to answer. So you've got all these folks seeing these unexplainable lights, and it's happening all over the place. Someone must have stepped in to try and make sense of it all, right? The government had to get involved at some point, didn't they? Oh, absolutely. It got too big to ignore. The Michigan State Police were getting flooded with calls. The FAA had its hands full. And even the big guns got brought in, didn't they? The Air Force? That's right. Back then, they were the ones tasked with investigating any potential UFO activity. They had this program, Project Blue Book. Heard of it. Bit of a legend in the UFO world, that one. They took this stuff seriously, you know, especially with the whole Cold War thing going on. Any unidentified object in the sky could be a potential threat. Right. Back then, you never knew if it was aliens or the Soviets. Exactly. So, yeah, the Air Force, they sent their people in, started poking around, interviewing witnesses, trying to separate fact from fiction. So what did they find? Give us the good stuff. Did they solve the mystery? Well, that's where things get a little murky. Despite everyone and their mother looking into it, no one could definitively explain the Michigan lights. No smoking gun. No smoking ray gun, unfortunately. No spaceships on the ground. No secret government projects confessed to. Just a whole lot of questions and a few grainy photos that could be anything. So the mystery lives on. Mm -hmm. And speaking of mysteries, we've got to talk about those eyewitness accounts. Because how much can we really trust what people claim to have seen especially when it comes to something as bizarre as a UFO. Uh, that is the million dollar question, isn't it? Eyewitness testimony, it can be a tricky thing. Tricky is an understatement, right? Our brains, they love to play tricks on us. That's for sure. Especially when we're talking about situations that are unexpected, a little frightening, maybe even out of this world. <laughs> Our perception can be a bit unreliable. Like I'm sure everyone's seen a shape in the clouds that looks like a bunny rabbit or a got. Or a UFO. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Our brains are hardwired to find patterns, even when there aren't any. So how do we know that these Michigan folks weren't just seeing what they wanted to see? That's the thing with UFOs, right? It's not like spotting a rare bird where you can pull out your field guide and say, yep, that's definitely a red-crested whatever. Yeah. We're dealing with the unknown, the unexplainable. So how do investigators even begin to unravel something like that? Where do you even start when it comes to figuring out if all those folks in Michigan were really on to something or just letting their imaginations run wild? Well, it's a bit like putting together a puzzle, but some of the pieces are missing and you're not even sure you have the box top to guide you. You gotta look for patterns, consistencies in the chaos. Like, did multiple people see the lights behaving a certain way, moving in a specific formation? Exactly. Were there any strange sounds associated with the sightings? What were the weather conditions like? You gotta eliminate all the mundane explanations first. Rule out the weather balloons and swamp gas. Precisely. Though I gotta say, I've never understood why people always jump to swamp gas. Right. Like, yeah. it's this magical gas that can morph into any shape and pull off aerial acrobatics. Maybe we need a whole other deep dive dedicated to debunking the myth of swamp gas and UFOs. Yeah. But I digress. The point is, you gotta approach these cases with a healthy dose of skepticism, but also an open mind. Easier said than done, I imagine, especially when you've got all these incredible stories swirling around. So let's talk about the official response for a minute. We touched on it earlier, how the Michigan State Police, the FAA, 
Even the Air Force got involved. What were they hoping to find? Was there ever any sense that they consider this a genuine threat? Well, you got to remember the context of the time. The Cold War was still simmering, tensions were high, and the idea of unidentified objects buzzing around in our airspace, well, that was enough to make anyone nervous. Right. Back then, it was like, is that a UFO or are the Russians testing some newfangled flying contraption? Exactly. So, yeah, I'd say there was a degree of concern, especially in those early days. But beyond the whole national security angle, I think there was also a genuine desire to understand what was going on. So it wasn't just about shooting first and asking questions later. Yeah. There was some scientific curiosity at play. Oh, absolutely. Project Blue Book, for all its flaws, was born out of this idea that we need to study these phenomena, not just dismiss them out of hand. They wanted data. They wanted hard evidence. And did they get it? Did all that investigating, all those interviews, lead to any concrete conclusions? That's the million-dollar question, isn't it? And unfortunately, the answer is... Not really. No smoking gun. Yeah. No alien artifacts or secret government blueprints left lying around. No, nope, none that we know of anyway. Despite their best efforts, the Michigan UFO wave remained just that. A wave of unexplained sightings. So what are we left with then? If the experts, with all their resources and technology, couldn't crack this case, where does that leave us? Are we doomed to wander the UFO rabbit hole forever? debating swamp gas versus spaceships? Well, I wouldn't say doomed. I prefer to think of it as an ongoing exploration. I like that. It's not about finding all the answers. It's about the journey. Exactly. Right? And who knows, maybe the answers are out there buried somewhere in those classified government documents, just waiting for a curious mind to unearth them. Which brings us to the heart of the matter, the real crux of the UFO debate, those tantalizing eyewitness accounts. Because at the end of the day, it all comes down to what people claim to have seen, right? But how do we separate genuine experiences from misinterpretations, hoaxes, or maybe even just plain old tall tales? That, my friend, is the question that keeps UFO researchers up at night, staring at the stars and wondering. I mean, it's tough, right? Because on one hand, you have people who swear up and down that they saw something truly extraordinary, something that defies explanation. And you can't just discount their experiences, can you? These are real people with real memories, even if those memories are a bit fuzzy around the edges. Exactly. <clears throat> and dismissing someone's experience out of hand, well, that doesn't get us any closer to the truth, does it? But at the same time, we have to acknowledge that memory is a fickle thing. It's not like a video recording, playing back events with perfect clarity. More like a game of telephone, right? Each time a memory gets replayed in our minds, it changes a little, gets embellished a bit. And when you add in the emotional component, the adrenaline rush of seeing something strange and unknown, well, that can really color our perceptions. So where do we even begin then? If we can't rely solely on eyewitness accounts, but we also can't dismiss them entirely, how do we navigate this UFO conundrum? Carefully, that's for sure. I think it's about looking for those little nuggets of truth, those details that seem to pop up across multiple independent accounts. You mean like those patterns we were talking about earlier? Exactly. If you have multiple witnesses, all strangers to each other, all describing a similar object or a particular type of movement, well, that's something worth paying attention to. It's like that saying, where there's smoke, there's fire, right? Except, in this case, it's where there are multiple UFO sightings, there might be yeah. something dot weird happening. Something like that. And look, I'm not saying that every UFO sighting is evidence of alien visitors or top secret government technology. Because let's be real, sometimes a cigar-shaped cloud is just a cigar-shaped cloud. Exactly. But I do believe that some of these cases, like the 1979 Michigan wave, deserve a closer look. They challenge us to question our assumptions, to expand our understanding of what's possible. It's about embracing that sense of wonder, that curiosity about the unknown that I think we all share deep down. So for all you folks out there who have looked up at the night sky and wondered, what if? You're not alone. And who knows, maybe, just maybe, some of those lights we see dancing among the stars are a reminder that we're not alone in this vast and mysterious universe. And on that note, I think we've given our listeners plenty to ponder. We certainly have. The 1979 Michigan UFO wave. A tree enigma wrapped in a riddle, sprinkled with a healthy dose of disco fever. Until next time, keep looking up and never stop questioning.